there are in the general population there are conditions we would call AIDS now in the presence of HIV positive antibody. Um, we would call this condition before we could call it tuberculosis or the mycobacterium avium complex infections. These are conditions the people get weaker and weaker and get lymph nodes here at the throat or in the abdomen. And we would treat them with a bit of cortisone if they are HIV negative and they improve. But in the presence of HIV antibodies, they would, as things currently stand, they would undergo treatment against tuberculosis plus antiretroviral treatment. And I have such two patients. The one is HIV negative, <clears throat> the one is positive, and the positive patient got during the therapy uh, severe dementia, which was reversible after stopping the antiretroviral drugs and the tuberculostatic treatment. And the other one who got just the bit of cortisone recovered completely. So it's a difference. In the, in the presence of HIV, you are always at risk of over-treatment. Yes, it's exactly, the, clinically, it's exactly the same condition. They are wasting away, they are wasting away, they are getting weaker and weaker and they don't know why, they're getting lymph nodes <coughs> and they're getting anemia and uh, well, we would say it's an AIDS-defining condition but they are HIV negative, so what to do? And in these conditions we use cortisone and uh, generally people recover under cortisone. And in that case it was like that, she recovered under cortisone. The clinical condition, we call it also sarcoidose, um, which has quite good prognosis. But if you treat this condition with antiretroviral drugs plus tuberculostatic treatment, uh, that's a hopeless overtreatment. So people will run into severe problems. Because of the HIV hypothesis, <coughs> doctors are very predisposed. Um, to treat people with antiretroviral drugs once they are HIV positive because they think um, they found the culprit, they found <coughs> what makes people sick because they believe that HIV is a virus with, um, with, with deadly competence. Yeah. Well, you never should trust uh, an authority, you should make up your own mind in, in any condition, I think. You should look at the people, you should look at the guy who is telling you something and um, you should look for the available information, which is easier to access at the moment because we have the internet and you should, and everybody should make up his own mind. Yeah, it, well, I ran into this when I was uh, at the oncologic department at the university in Kiel and when I saw my first AIDS patient, this guy was actually suffering from lymphoma. He has a so-called Burkitt lymphoma. And all of a sudden they told me, my colleagues told me, well, this guy has got AIDS now. And I, why, why, he, why he's got AIDS now, I, I see he's suffering from lymphoma. Yeah, well, he, he reacted positive in, a, in the HIV test. And I, I thought a while and said, well, okay, but that's not a new clinical disease, it's still a lymphoma. So uh, um, everybody was talking about the big, the big AIDS epidemic at that time and now we have the first AIDS patients here. But I said, well, for me it's not an epidemic in the classic sense. For me it's an epidemic of a new test. And uh, that's what we know now it was one of the problems of the HIV AIDS epidemic that 29 of old diseases are now called AIDS if you have antibodies to HIV. So this guy, was called an AIDS patient now and uh, got another treatment. The lymphoma treatment would have been chemotherapy for six months or so with a classical uh, chemotherapeutic treatment and most of them recover after that treatment. But that guy was called AIDS patient now and he got a new treatment which was called the ACT treatment that was the, the remedy against AIDS at that time because it came on the market in 1987 or so. And, uh, well, this guy pays, uh, passed away after a few years and we didn't uh, notice very much. We thought, well, he is an AIDS patient, he, 
he has to die very soon. But after a while we saw in that hospital, because we were a hematologic department and we took a lot of bone marrow samples, we saw that the bone marrow actually was disappearing under the treatment with ACT. And at that time we noticed, and other doctors also noticed, that ACT was, the dosage was much too high. Because we gave it, the, the licensing study was done with 1500 milligrams per day on an on a indefinite basis, so they, they took it until death. And uh, that was much too high. And there was a big article in Science also that most of the AIDS patients couldn't stand the ACT because of bone marrow suppression. And that was a problem. <clears throat> so that was the, that's the very reason why everybody believes HIV is a deadly virus because the HIV positive patient at that time got a deadly treatment. Yeah. In the early days when you were treating all these patients with AZT, did, did anybody have an inkling that it was the drugs that was killing them and not the virus? Well, we all thought it's the virus, yeah. Nobody thought you always die uh, in spite of the treatment. You, 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 you don't die because of the treatment. That's what we always think. We think, well, the patients die although we have done everything for him. Uh, that's why we thought, of course, it's the virus which kills the people. Yeah, but after a while we saw that maybe the treatment could play a role as well. Yeah. Well, the, the problem is that the side effect of the drugs are almost indistinguishable from progressing AIDS. Yeah, uh, you, they are just passing away. They, the bone marrow goes down, the, the guts, the, all the fast dividing cells are uh, being hit by the treatment so um, the treatment causes uh, a very similar condition we would expect from an AIDS patient that's why nobody noticed that there was something wrong with the treatment otherwise or if we would had a placebo control we would have noticed but they stopped the placebo control already after four months the license licensing study the official study stopped it because by uh, by then it looked that the treated group would do better than the untreated group. That's why for ethical reasons they said we have to stop now, we have to give ACT for everybody. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but if you look at the mechanism uh, of the drug then you can very easily see that this uh, effect of the first four months could not be sustained for for years because uh, you are run into more and more side effects of course yeah and if you give this um, antiviral drug or chemotherapy it's just like chemotherapy ACT was developed actually for chemotherapy and we we, we use the drugs with exactly the same design to treat leukemia for instance that's a completely different condition. Leukemia has too much cells, and AIDS patients have, if they have something, they have low cells. Right. <laughs> That's the real problem, because uh, doctors have no experience with AIDS patients because there are no many here. Yeah. <clears throat> we have very few AIDS patients, and the, the the normal doctor almost see no patients in his lifetime. And if you see one, he, he sent him to the HIV AIDS ambulance. Yeah. That means there is no um, experience with AIDS patients. And that's why uh, nobody thinks very much about the problem that there is not a new clinical condition. They always, they don't uh, recognize the, the circular argument. Yeah, you say, for instance, <coughs> lymphoma plus HIV, is AIDS today, and without HIV it would be a lymphoma. And they think that's okay. They don't think that there is something to ask about. If you are mark marked HIV positive, you get a completely different treatment. You don't get the usual lymphoma therapy, but you get uh, an antiviral treatment indefinite, for lifelong. And that's why these cases 
uh, have a, a worse outcome, I think. Okay. You, always, you also see it in the treatment of tuberculosis. Yeah. If, you get, if you have tuberculosis nowadays and are HIV positive, you get tuberculosis treatment plus HIV treatment. And that uh, it's impossible. That, uh, that's not, uh, uh, the body cannot stand such a chemical insult. That's too much meds. Yeah, that's why um, tuberculosis patients with HIV have a much worse outcome. The drugs, not the virus. Yeah. Now, how soon after starting treatment did you begin seeing patients suffering from side effects with AZT in the early 80s? Or the late 80s? Pardon me? How? how soon after starting treatment with AZT in the late 80s did patients begin seeing side effects? Well, in the f after the first four years, I think. But w as I told you, um, uh, the clinicians are not aware about the side effects because the side effects of AZT are almost indistinguishable from progressing AIDS. What we thought AIDS patients are suffering because the first AIDS patients who actually uh, had something like a new symptoms or new disease where these uh, gays, were, which were um, described by Gottlieb, the, um, and they, all of them were heavy drug abusers. They were, all of them were homosexuals and all of them were heavy nitride abusers. And they died without ACT. They died without ACT, of course. There was no ACT on the market at that time. But they were all very heavy drug abusers. They uh, ruined their immune system uh, with uh, th these nitride inhalants. And I think there is a lot of good evidence, uh, laboratory evidence, that nitride inhalants are very toxic uh, substances. What is your thoughts on AIDS medication today? Uh, well, the AIDS medication today is not that toxic than it was in the early days. And it's a potent uh, antibiotic drug treatment, uh, drug regime. That means um, it kills almost everything. What you, also bacteria, parasites. And that's the very reason why in some clinical cases it seems to work. Especially in uh, South Africa where a lot of parasitic infections are very common like leishmaniosis or tuberculosis or malaria or things like that and uh, in the beginning you kill all these parasites and make uh, the clinical problem better so uh, patients really do better for the short term but in the long term they uh, they die also so uh, that's not it's not no healing with these drugs. So it would probably be better to treat these patients, to diagnose the patients properly. That's another problem of the HIV hypothesis. Once you have found HIV, you say, well, we have found the cause of your disease. You don't look for any other uh, clinical conditions anymore. So you don't look for tuberculosis, you don't look for Leishmania. If you have HIV, you say, well, it's HIV, and you give them antiretroviral drugs. And in some patients it works because it kills all the parasites and so they seem to do better in the short term at least. The treatment success is an euphemistic uh, saying for less drug toxicity. It's not really uh, a better therapy but it's, uh, it's less toxic. Okay. Now, it would be much better if you treat tuberculosis with the classical tuberculosis treatment and not with antiretroviral drugs. Okay. Make sure you drink your coffee. Yeah. Have you treated AIDS patients successfully, or what are called AIDS patients, without the use of antiretroviral therapy? Well, <clears throat> here in Germany, you don't find so many uh, very severe ill patients. You find some patients who have um, conditions like CMV infection and we uh, cured them with uh, treatment against CMV and also with uh, Candida you can uh, treat them with uh, treatment against Candida but on the other hand it's sometimes difficult to 
um, have them off the anti uh, the anti retroviral drug treatment because another problem is the the problem that the insurances pay for the antiretroviral treatment but they don't pay for an alternative treatment so if people want to take glutathione or things like that um, they have to pay it on their own that's a problem expensive. here it's expensive and that's a problem here and they can't take antiretroviral drugs have you seen a direct correlation between the amount of T cells one has and the clinical health of the individual the correlation between T cells and health Yes, there seems to be a correlation, but uh, not always. <laughs> That's the problem. So there, there seem to be a, a different mechanism for low or high T cell counts. Yeah. So I have seen people with low T cell counts who are f completely fine, and on the other hand, you find people with high T cell counts who are severe ill. Yeah. So um, it doesn't make very much sense to use the T cells as a surrogate marker, and. This has shown the Concord study, actually, that the T-cell count actually doesn't predict the clinical outcome. Well, oh. If not HIV, especially in Germany, what do you believe was killing people in the very beginning? Well, it was, you can look at the epidemiology and it was a very certain group of people which was um, which got this, uh, which run into these AIDS problems. And uh, you see that this syndrome was first called GRIT, which means gay related immune deficiency. And the beginning of the disease, uh, of this AIDS syndrome, showed that it was very closely defined to certain risk groups. And it still is. It still is. Uh, in these uh, risk groups in the developed countries, that means in our country, in Germany and in the United States and uh, everywhere else, it's a completely different picture if you look to the developing countries, to like India or Africa. That's in our country it's 90% uh, male, 10% female, and in Africa it's 50-50. So there must be another reason. It's not that Africans are more promiscuous than Germans. Yeah. How much must be another reason. Yeah, well, <clears throat> the epidemic is in Germany confined to the same risk groups than it was in the very beginning. It's still 90% male and 10% uh, female. And uh, it only seems to spread into the general population because of the, of the testing. And also the, the hemophiliacs who react HIV positive is uh, is a sign that there could be something else than uh, uh, drug abuse because hemophiliacs don't use drugs. But the the, that's the very problem. The hemophiliacs, the HIV positive hemophiliacs, they were all uh, victims of the AIDS ACT treatment. You can see it in the um, study which was published in Nature. You can see that the increase of the mortality of the hemophiliacs was just in that year when ACT came on the market. So the HIV positive hemophiliacs all got this treatment and died. And that was the very reason why everybody believed HIV is the culprit. Yeah. Now as a doctor, what does an HIV positive test mean to you? For me it means nothing. I just look at the patient, uh, if the, the test reacts positive, that shouldn't mean anything for the patient. In most cases, um, it can mean something if you have an inflammation of any sort, the test can react positive, if it's a hepatitis or even the flu. But uh, it has not more meaning than uh, um, any other laboratory uh, measurement for inflammation. As a, as a doctor, what advice would you give patients who have tested HIV positive? Well, I, I would ask them whether they have any risk behavior 
and if they have, I would advise them to stop it and don't care about this test. Yeah. So for you, an Just HIV positive test is not a death sentence? No, not at all. It's not a death sentence at all. No. And I have seen many patients who, who understood that and live normal lives. Do you have patients that have been diagnosed HIV positive that don't take any medication and are healthy? Yes. I have, I have quite a few patients who are still living, which were tested in 1985, which <coughs> in, the, in the year when the test came on the market. And all of them declined treatment. They were all advised to take treatment, so they are no long-term survivor in the classical sense. They were all advised to take treatment, but they declined the treatment for different reasons. Because they didn't want to take toxic drugs, because they were feeling well at that time. And how are they doing today? They are still living. Healthy? Yeah. Do you believe HIV is the cause of AIDS? No, I don't, I don't believe that HIV is the cause of AIDS, no. There is no uh, clinical uh, proof there is just this correlation, and the correlation doesn't prove causation. There are no papers which show that HIV is a deadly virus, and most of the people who are tested positive are healthy. Then you need this um, incubation period to explain the problem. We have the, the next epidemic, as you know, is the HCV epidemic, where the, we have the same problem. There is a positive test and the people are cold, well, you are healthy now, but you need 30 years to get liver cirrhosis or, as you know, HPV, human papilloma virus, the same uh, idea. You are tested positive now and you are told you get 50 years later cervical cancer. These are all assumptions, but there is no proof. Well, the ACT treatment actually was the very reason that everybody, everybody believes HIV is a deadly virus because every HIV positive patient at that time got this deadly treatment. So uh, I think uh, most of the HIV researchers and most of the, the doctors who treated AIDS patients know that, that we over-treated the patients in the beginning. But nobody wants to realize uh, what what was the real effect of this overtreatment? That means that we killed a whole generation of AIDS patients in the late 80s. That's why the, the peak of the AIDS deaths, which is documented by the CDC, was in 1991. Yeah. But the CDC actually uh, tried to hide this problem in uh, uh, widening the AIDS definition. So they changed the AIDS definition in the following years that the peak was in 1995 and they argued that this peak was there because by then the new drugs would uh, uh, solve the problem, would make AIDS treatable. But indeed it was the ACT treatment which made this peak in 1991 because after four years or three years of ACT treatment, almost everybody, the mortality was up to 100%. The, well, the hemophiliacs are especially a group which suffered from the ACT because they, they had no drugs problem. But the hemophiliacs have an Im immunological problem because they, they depend on uh, factor eight to survive. Yeah. So they, if, they are, if they have a severe disease of hemophilia, they have to have uh, almost every day uh, foreign blood transfusion, uh, a clotting factor. They have a transfusion of clotting factor, which is full of uh, foreign protein. And that indeed uh, lowers your immune system's response. Also your immune system has a damage because of the uh, foreign protein injections. That means hemophiliacs are at risk for tuberculosis, for instance, or candida infections and things like that, which we call AIDS now. And once they are HIV positive, they got the ACT treatment, of course. 
And uh, if you look at the study which was done by Darby and was published in Nature in 19, when was it, 1995, I think, then you see the, the, the rise in mortality was exactly in that year, but after that year an ACT was introduced. So the hemophilics are especially very poor victims of the ACT treatment. I see, I see no end of this um, catastrophe, yeah? because the clinician, they think they are right. They think they are right because they have their viral load measurements and they have their surrogate markers, the helper cells, and they think if they lower the viral load, they do something good. Yeah? And in the developed countries anyway, the, most of the patients are not treated because they are sick, but they are treated because they have a viral load and they have a CD4 count from 300 cells or something like that. That's where we say you should undergo antiviral treatment. The patient is completely healthy at that time. So it's a sort of prophylactic treatment with chemotherapeuticals, which makes no sense at all. So there is just in this year, there came a study out, it was just published in The Lancet, which shows that the viral load is not a good surrogate marker for the clinical outcome. And that's something like a proof for what Peter Duesberg was saying, and we are saying that HIV is just a passenger virus, so we are treating just a harmless virus um, without helping the patient. Yeah? It's uh, with, uh, with this study, which was just published now, uh, there is a sort of proof that um, that's not HIV is not the culprit. And you, you said this is a catastrophe. Yeah. With no end in sight. Yes. Why is that? Well, I, I don't see the. Well, there should there should be a discussion about that problem, and there is no discussion. If you say publicly today that you don't believe or that you don't think that HIV is the cause of AIDS, uh, then you are called a Holocaust denier, yeah, or a child killer, or something like that. Yeah. So there's no, not, no possibility to, to, to bring up a scientific discussion at the moment. And that's the real fight, that we should bring up a scientific discussion. Both sides should sit on, a, on one table and uh, discuss this problem. Some people are very fortunate that they don't have these side effects. What's it is it? Applying to toxins in the So what's the